Hey everybody, I'm super excited to see you all here. My name is Vlad and I'm a former eBay product manager. And today I'm going to talk about how to find your first product management job. It doesn't matter if you're trying to get your first PM job, break into product from other roles, what I'm about to show you applies across the board. And a little bit about myself. So I started off as a software engineer and then became a product manager. I worked for many different companies, early stage, growth stage, and big tech companies like eBay. I'm very passionate about helping new PMs grow and um, helping mid-level PMs to get to the senior and principal level. And uh, a few facts about me, I'm originally from Ukraine and I really love calisthenics. So we have a lot of ground to cover today. Uh, first of all, I want to start off with uh, explaining what product management is and why a lot of people actually want to become PMs. Then I'm going to tell you a little personal story about myself um, covering how, how I became a product manager and uh, why this choice changed my life. Um, also gonna, I'm also going to talk about some common ways to get a job in product and uh, how to fix a no experience, no job problem, because a lot of people think that if you have no experience, you can't get the job, which is totally not true. And I'm going to tell about, um, I'm going to talk about how to fix that. Uh, also, I think it's very important to cover essential PM skills and also some what I call street skills of uh, great PMs. Some, some of these skills um, are more important for senior PMs, but I think uh, more junior and newbie PMs can develop them as well early on in their careers. And uh, for the dessert, we have product management job search tactics. Uh, I'm going to cover a few methods that will help you get uh, PM jobs. So first of all, let's start with um, discussing what product management is and why people become PMs. So there is a lot of ambiguity around this role and a lot of people confuse product managers with project managers and program managers. So in a nutshell, a product manager is the person who identifies the customer need and uh, the larger business objectives that a product or a feature will fulfill. And then product manager articulates what success looks like for a product and uh, leads a team to turn that vision into reality. I know it might sound ambiguous, but uh, product management is one of those jobs that um, has a lot of ambiguity, which is fine. And uh, this is, I think this is one of those things that makes this job quite fun. So why do people want to become product managers in the first place? A lot of product managers I met actually feel like they don't belong anywhere else. They can't be designers, they can't be engineers or customer support or sales or marketers, but they know a little bit of everything. And most of them also have great leadership skills. And a combination of these qualities makes them great product managers. Uh, also, a lot of people want to be like this guy. Steve Jobs uh, is actually regarded as one of the greatest product managers this world has ever known, even before product management was a thing. And as you know, he wasn't an engineer, he wasn't a designer, but he really understood what his users actually want and he knew how to deliver it to them. So let me tell you a personal story. Here is how I became a product manager. Early on, when I was a kid, uh, I had a lot of interest in computers and in high school, uh, I hacked emails and video games with my friends and it was a lot of fun. You know, we didn't do anything crazy, but you know, we were just having fun and we didn't cause a lot of damage. So after that, I started studying computer science in university in Ukraine, and eventually I became a software engineer. But over time, I realized that I like building, but I don't really like coding. And sitting and writing code, debugging and testing stuff is just not something I saw myself doing for the rest of my life. And, you know, it, it worked out well for a lot of people, but I just realized that it's not for me. It's not something I want to do. And at the same time, I had a lot of interest in business and design and uh, a lot of other things. And I was thinking, okay, what should be my next step? What, what should I do? And back then I didn't even know what product management is. So what I did, I started talking to my CTO, uh, back at that time. And I told him, Hey, you know what? I don't, I don't, I don't see myself you know, being a developer forever. So I want to try something else. And he said, okay, you know, we have a lot of customers and it seems like you understand how the business works. 
So maybe you want to try yourself as a first product manager. So basically what happened, I talked my CTO into promoting me to a PM and um, the rest is pretty much history. Now let's talk about some common ways to get a job in product. First of all, a lot of people now have an opportunity to get the job straight out of college. So if you go to college, if you study technical discipline of some sort, you have a chance to land a job as a PM if you know how to network and uh, if you really, really know why you want to become a product manager. So another option you have is to get promoted at your company like I did. So you can start working for a company as a software engineer, designer, customer support, marketer or someone else. And then uh, when you start exhibiting product management skills and there is a business need in your company to have a great product manager, you can start talking to your peers, to your managers and uh, managers from other departments. And um, if it all goes well, you'll get promoted to a product manager. And um, I've seen a lot of people going that route because it's just easier. And because, you know, when you're applying to other companies, the process is a lot longer. But uh, once you're in the company, making the transition is a lot easier. But again, as I said, um, your third option is to find a job in another company. So even if you don't have uh, experience, you can work on side projects, you can build something with your friends, or you can just um, present your experience in a way that will position you better for PM roles. And um, I think actually one of the best ways to become a product manager is to build something um, like build a startup, uh, build a product, get some users, um, understand how it works, uh, work on your customer acquisition skills, develop a strategy, vision, and then when you start applying for jobs, demonstrate sound judgment and the skills you've built. This is probably one of the best ways to position yourself um, for product management roles. Uh, yeah, let's talk about one of the biggest problems that uh, junior PMs experience. You can't get a job because you have no experience and you can't get any experience because you never had a job as a PM, right? So how do we fix that? So first of all, probably one of the easiest way to solve this problem is just to get personal coaching. Just work with someone who will handhold you and uh, explain what you need to do in order to get the job as a product manager. Um, this process can be time consuming. Sometimes it can be expensive, but it's well worth it because, um, as you know, most most athletes and, uh, you know, most great CEOs and uh, VPs, a lot of them actually have coaches. And there is a reason for it because coaching is very effective. So if you have a, a chance, if you have, uh, you know, if you have money, if you know someone great, you can work with, you know, try to get them to become your coach. And um, that will that will make it a lot easier for you to get your first job in product management. You can also buy a course, uh, but the problem I see with a lot of courses is that the knowledge is very surface level and um, in most cases very limited. So you can just pick some bits and pieces, but it's not enough to get you the job you want. Um, also, you can enroll into a quality product management program. Um, again, this is somewhat like a mix between coaching and uh, buying a course because you get a lot more quality content, a lot more attention. Uh, but in most cases, it still leaves um, certain gaps. But again, it's, it's definitely better than uh, buying a course. And also, um, it can be pricey. Uh, you can also get an MBA. This is probably one of the most expensive options on the table. And in my experience, it's not worth in most cases because like, why would you pay 80 or $100,000 to get an MBA, get yourself in that just to get a job in product? And, uh, you know, I don't have an MBA. I got a job in product, so it's not, not a big deal if you don't have an MBA, right? Um, and the best way to fix the no experience problem is to work on a side project as a PM, as I described build something yourself or uh, create a startup with friends, um, create a vision, strategy, uh, build a few prototypes, test them with real users, work on customer acquisition and just demonstrate sound judgment. After you do this, 
you can present this experience as a, as, as a real product management experience on your resume and this will position you well for PM roles. So now let's talk about the skills you need to become a great product manager. And um, in many companies, and I would probably say in most companies, PMs are doing something um, like, like you see here in this picture. You're juggling a lot of things at the same time, working on conflicting priorities. So uh, it's really important to understand how to manage the chaos you're getting yourself into. And first of all, you need uh, what I call hard product skills. So execution, strategy, sense, you need to know how to lead and most importantly, you need to understand how to prioritize features and initiatives. Um, project management skills are also important, but again, as a, as a product manager, you will be doing some project management work, although you're not a project manager, but again, it's still important to know how to communicate, how to track things, um, how to manage priorities and uh, you know manage people up and down and uh, you know just just make sure that things don't fall apart and uh, get delivered also it wouldn't hurt to understand technology things like apis difference between back end and front end system design architecture and just general technical lingo um, i would say for most roles it's not really required but again since you'll be working with engineers quite a lot uh, when they say something, I think it would be much better for you to understand what they're talking about because you know you can't manage something you don't know and you don't need to be an expert engineer or architect. You just need to know enough to be dangerous. And um, number four on the list is design skills. And again, you don't need to be a great designer. No one expects you to crank out per pixel perfect designs. But what you need to have is a, an understanding of what good design is and the differences between good and bad design. And again, a lot of that comes with experience, um, you know, and, and once you become a PM, you will learn a lot about the users, what they like, what they don't like and how to make their life easier. And that's when you will develop an intuition for good design. Uh, you also need to know how to make prototypes and wireframes. Again, this is just one of the ways to communicate your ideas to a larger audience. So learning tools like um, Figma and Balsamic would benefit you a lot. Um, also knowing how to analyze data, measure success, um, measure feature adoption, and just doing quick estimation is really important for all the PMs because Again, your goal is to launch a product, and if you don't know how to measure success of the product you're launching, um, you're going to be in big trouble later. Um, also, for um, for many industries, it's really important to understand the specifics. So, for example, if you're working for a company that builds, uh, I don't know, CRM systems, CRM system for salespeople, right? You need to know um, enough about the sales process, about how these people uh, work with the CRM system you're building, about their challenges, problems, and uh, you need to have a general understanding of the market. Like, who are your competitors? Are they better or worse? Uh, what's the market landscape? How um, the industry, like, is the industry growing or the growth is declining? The, these types of things. And I can go on and on about it, but um, you need to know, you know, at, at least you need to get the basics right. So, and um, the last skill, uh, probably last but not least, one of the very important skills is communication. And um, my personal take on this is I think you can only be great at one of these. So written, verbal or visual communication. Um, I rarely see people that can clearly communicate verbally and also they're great writers and uh, they can create great presentations. Obviously these people exist, but um, they are very rare unicorns. But what you can do, you can identify what your bad, uh, what, what, what is the communication style that you're good at. For example, for me, it's visual communication. Uh, you know, I can write specs, um, I can explain things verbally, but I'm much, much, much better when it comes to presentation, you know, building 
prototypes, conveying my ideas visually and, uh, you know, presenting to a large audience when I have, uh, you know, some visuals in front of me. And that's why, uh, that's why you see me using a lot of memes uh, and images in this presentation, because again, it helps me get my point across. But again, you need to pick which one, um, you know, is better for you personally, because every person is different. And um, yeah, I also want to mention a few uh, street skills of great PMs. Again, some uh, these are some of the skills that people normally don't talk about, but I think it's really important to um, understand and apply them in your day-to-day -day work. So first of all, um, as a product manager, your output is not code or design. Your output is decisions. So you need to learn how to make right decisions most of the time. And this can be achieved by thinking more than doing. Um, I like using a uh, snake analogy, you know, like uh, a snake when the snake is trying to catch a mouse or a frog. Uh, she's patiently waiting and thinking and planning her move and then she attacks. So I think a lot of great product managers um, have the same approach. They think a lot, uh, they spend a lot of time clarifying, you know, making sure that um, what they're working on can actually benefit the customer. And, uh, you know, they, they, they polish the presentation they're working on. They're, they're just doing a lot of, a lot of thinking, a lot of work behind the scenes. And once they know that the plan they developed is correct and that, uh, the feature they envisioned is going to benefit the users, that's when they start doing, because the last thing you want is to quickly, you know, create something on the napkin, turn it into a plan and hand it off to your designers and engineers. That's a recipe for disaster. So again, spend more time thinking uh, rather than doing. And um, yeah, you'll be a lot more successful in your PM journey. Um, second skill is empathy. And by empathy, I mean empathy for users and their needs and empathy for your executives, your managers and their needs as well. Uh, because it's, you know, as, as a PM, you have two goals. First is build something uh, that your customers will love, something that will solve their problems. But at the same time, you're working for a company, you're working for a business and all businesses need to make money, right? And um, it's really important to understand what drives uh, the behavior of your users and, uh, you know, people you work at your company with. So, um, yeah, another skill uh, which is which becomes more important if you work for a big company or you become more senior is politics. Again, a lot of people hate politics, but I think, um, you know, as, as, as the company grows, politics are pretty much unavoidable. So you need to know how to navigate your way uh, through the corporate ladder and how to build relationships with your coworkers. Really important. Um, number four on the list is knowing how to do quick analysis and estimation. Again, th this is linked closely to the um, skills to the skill I talked about before, which is knowing how to analyze data. So again, once you understand uh, how to run uh, quick analysis, how to do estimation on the napkin, uh, after that, you can actually apply, start applying thinking. Uh, and then thinking turns into doing but a lot of great ideas just start with quick analysis again just just to make sure you don't begin working on something that doesn't make any sense um, another very important skill is knowing how to summarize and distill your thoughts again this is very closely tied to um, thinking and doing so again when you spend a lot of your time thinking you will get better at understanding how to summarize your thoughts and uh, how to communicate them to the audience you're working with. Again, your goal is to make right decisions most of the time. And another goal you have is to make sure that everyone in the room understands why and how you make these decisions. And this can be achieved through clarity and clarity is achieved by saying no to many things, first of all, and by uh, trimming the fat. So again, you can you can start uh, with a brain dump, you know, writing a lot of your thoughts, thinking about things, but at the end, you want to end up with a crystal clear 
summary and uh, crystal clear bullet points that can help you convey, uh, you know, help you carry the point um, across. And um, yeah, the last sweet skill is knowing how to keep things on track. Again, at the end of the day, your goal is to ship the product, satisfy your users, and uh, you know, keep your internal stakeholders happy as well. So uh, this will require you to understand how to keep things on track and make sure that things don't fall apart. And um, for the dessert, let's talk about some product management job search tactics, right? And um, <laughs> I can give you a minute to think about what uh, three tactics I'm gonna talk about based on these pictures. Uh, but um, okay, I think for now we should skip that. So the first tactic is um, spray and pray. Actually, this is uh, the, la the last image on my list. So this is a tactic that uh, most people use in their job search. So what they do, they would go to websites like Glassdoor and Indeed and just, you know, spam their resume, uh, blast a bunch of companies, you know, and hope they get a response. And um, I'd say this is probably um, the least efficient tactic, but the fastest because you can, uh, you know, <laughs> actually know some people who created bots and hired assistants to do it for them. Uh, you know, they, they hire someone for three dollars an hour, and this person sends resume to a bunch of companies. And again, in some in some cases, it works uh, because it's fast. But again, it's still um, it's not very efficient because you're in most cases you're sending out resumes to companies that have no interest in hiring you. Um, the second tactic is uh, what I call phishing net. So this is when you identify a specific industry or specific types of companies um, you want to work for. So this tactic is um, somewhere in the middle. So at the same time, you're not like you're not spreading yourself thin. You're not blasting your resumes to random companies, but you also have enough focus and you know what you're doing. For example, if you want to work for only for e-commerce companies and uh, your resume positions you better for, you know, consumer e-commerce roles, you'll have a lot more success with these companies. Uh, but again, if, if you if you know that this is what you want to do and you just start spraying and, and praying again, you're probably just going to get a lot of rejections and it's not going to get you anywhere. So again, tactic number two is um, probably one of, one of the best ones. And um, I, I would highly recommend a lot of people um, use it again, just identify and, and decide, decide for yourself, decide what you want, you know, what types of companies you want to work for, why, and then tailor your resume and, uh, fill in the gaps in your skills and start applying for jobs at these companies. Uh, and uh, I can almost guarantee you, if you use this tactic, you'll have a lot more success. And the last tactic is uh, what I call sniper or sniping. Um, a lot of people want to get a job at a specific company. In most cases, these are uh, Fortune 500 or fan companies like, I know, Google, Netflix eBay, Amazon, Square, and so on. So these companies um, are different. And what I mean by that, they, they have very specific hiring practices. So um, as you probably heard, Google is notorious for having a lot of interview rounds and uh, you know team matching, a lot of hard technical questions and all that. So And uh, Facebook, for example, really focuses on product execution and leadership. So if you apply the same tactics that uh, you know you use for startup jobs, if you start applying them to these big companies, it's just not gonna work. So what you need to do is you need to act like a sniper. You need to prepare well, you need to make sure you understand exactly what these companies are looking for, how they hire, who they hire, why they hire, and then just take a shot, right? Uh, like a sniper, it takes a lot of preparation to, you know, for, for a sniper to get into right position, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, there is no wind or make correction, you know, whatever correction he or she needs to make. And uh, yeah, then a the sniper takes a shot. And that's, that's the same tactic you should use when applying to these, you know, big, big companies and, uh, you know, some specific roles. The last thing I want to leave you with is this quote, product manager is a leader and a janitor at the same time. 
And I personally think it's true because you're a leader, right? You're, you're leading the team. You make sure that uh, the team delivers, team builds the product and the product satisfies the needs of your users and uh, that your, you know, your executives are happy, business goals are met. But at the same time, you're um, also acting as a janitor and whatever your team needs help with, whether it's, you know, sometimes writing a spec, thinking about uh, some edge cases that you forgot or just helping with testing or designing, you know, in most cases, you will be the person that is going to help them fill in the gaps and achieve success. So it's really important to remember that you're a leader and a janitor at the same time. And um, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. And um, obviously, I can't lay out the whole PM job search strategy and teach you all the skills you need uh, in uh, 30 minutes. But I think everything I laid out in this presentation should be good enough to just get you started and uh, point you in the right direction. And um, as always, happy to connect with everybody. So if you have any questions, let's connect, reach out to me if you need help. You can find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, and um, Instagram. My uh, username is uh, VLGasan, or you can just um, search my name. Thank you, and um, yeah, I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.